Hey everyone, this is Lomi, and this week I'm working on Rillin's modifications. It's been a bit since I worked on these mods, so just as a quick recap, Rillin is my Lottie doll blue Ray Christopher, and he's also supposed to be Rune's little brother, so that means he needs his own lizard feet and hands. I ordered a pair of legs from Resin Soul to put on this doll and dyed them, but now I need to make those legs fit. This modification will be less damaging than Rune's was, if all goes well. Instead of altering the actual thigh pieces, I'll be making caps on the top that will fit into the doll's hip sockets. So I start by putting plastic wrap on the ball joints at the top of the new thighs and tape it in place. This will protect the leg pieces from the epoxy clay I'll be using. Here I've got the doll's hip piece. You can see the ball joints are much too small to fit as they are. I've used washi tape to tape off the edges of the doll's hips. This is only partly to keep this video family friendly. It's mostly there because this doll is 10 years old and heavily yellowed, so any scrapes or scratches on the resin surface could result in uneven coloration, and I don't want that. I'll be using epoxy sculpt for this. My epoxy is really old, and you can tell because a lot of the binders have separated from the green part, giving it this weird yellow-brown look. It's still usable at this point, but I have to be more careful about making sure it's evenly mixed, since all those binders have to be worked back into the clay. Once the clay is smoothly mixed, I start applying it over the ball joint on the top of the thigh, building up to roughly the shape and size I want. These legs are also quite a bit shorter than his human legs, and I want him to retain that height. So I'll build the caps up, making him just a bit taller. This takes a lot of clay. I originally planned to cast these pieces in resin, but some sections are so thin that I think they'll be prone to breakage if they're resin. Epoxy clay is much stronger, so since these are in a place that won't really be visible on the doll, I'll just leave them as clay and paint them. I push a tool down into the top of the leg to keep a space open on top. This is where the elastic will feed through later. This hole will need to be widened, but this shows me exactly where it needs to be so I can drill it out bigger later on. As you can see, I sketched out an idea of what I wanted these pieces to look like. I get them roughly that shape and size, then I use water to smooth out the surface of the clay. It won't be perfectly smooth, but that's what sanding is for. Before I put it aside to dry, I cut out a guide for the string channel in the front of the cap. This will be widened later on too, but giving myself a rough guideline now will make things easier later.
After the epoxy is fully cured, I double check the fit. I originally wanted these to work as mobility joints and allow the thigh pieces to rotate, but they have that locking ridge at the top that prevents the legs from sliding. Ultimately, I think standing stability is more important than motion range, so I decided to keep the thigh pieces locked in place. The pieces fit pretty securely, so now it's time to start cleaning them up. I make a note of where they need to be trimmed and refined, then start carving and sanding away the extra epoxy. I push the caps into the hips to see how they move and where they need to be reshaped, then start sanding with my battery powered Dremel. This creates a lot of dust, so always make sure you're wearing proper respiratory protection when doing things like this. I carve a notch into the front of the cap to help the doll have better range of motion for sitting. But this part of the cap is especially thin, so I can't make it much deeper than this. I use a cutting bit to carve out the string channel and slots at the top, and also to smooth out some bumps and ridges on the inside of the cap. Then it's time for more fittings. Sorry for the change in lighting, I worked on these parts for days. They're getting closer though. Fitting them to the hips now and then helps me better determine how to shape them. They're really close so I start using sandpaper by hand to remove some of the really rough marks left by the Dremel. I'll need to sand quite a bit more to get a good end result, but right now I'm more worried about functionality than good finishing. Moving the pieces around in the hip socket shows me there are still some places where it's rubbing, so I carve those down a little more with a knife. Once it moves smoothly, I'll be able to focus more on refining and finishing. I can't imagine doing this for a whole doll, can you? All the shaping and sanding, fitting pieces over and over again. This took me weeks just to make some thigh caps. How long would it take to do a whole doll? That's why when I make my own dolls, I think I'll stick to doing heads and faceplates, and just buy bodies from an established doll company. I don't think I can handle making my own full doll from scratch. Before I put the time and effort into smoothly sanding and painting these thigh parts, there's one important test the doll has to pass. So I get his body and string him, making sure the parts fit the way I'm envisioning. It's really important to me that this doll be able to stand, so this is a serious test.
And there he is, Rillin's up and standing. Still headless for the moment, and his arms need to be restrung because they're super kicky. But he's nice and solid on his own two feet with no additional support. That's exactly what I was hoping for. So that means I can move forward with finishing these pieces. It's not a perfect hybrid, of course. Because of the shape of his legs, he's got some weird posture, especially when sitting. If his knees are bent, he can sit perfectly upright, but when his legs are out straight, it tilts him back. But he won't be sitting that way often, and these thigh pieces do end up giving him a pretty good range of motion for more interesting poses. So that's it for now. Aside from final sanding and painting, his leg mod is done. Painting these parts and his scales will come next, and then the next adventure, sculpting his hands. That's all for today though. Thanks for watching. Bye.